Hello friends. So you have seen the animated version of three-way handshake where you have also seen the calculation. So this will be helpful for you if you want to do a quick study of three-way handshake. And now let's move into the detailed explanation. So before that, I would like to request you to please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification of all my videos. This three-way handshake is really helpful for you for troubleshooting purpose. Okay. I have taken a small topology where one person is trying to access uh, one server. In this, we have seen that uh, how the packet is going. So the first thing is that communication can happen in TCP or UDP. Okay. See, the packets are going on TCP and UDP. But your three-way handshake is only for TCP. Like uh, if you are doing a voice calls, then it is going over UDP. UDP is very fast. Okay. Videos, these all things are UDP. But when you are doing troubleshooting, three-way handshake is very important for you. But you should also be aware that it's only for the TCP, not for UDP or other protocols. <clears throat> okay. I have taken an example, another example of IPsec VPN. Even if it is IPsec VPN, three-way handshake will happen because IPsec VPN is just connecting two offices and it's giving you the secure media, secure communication channel. But in this also, your packets which are going, suppose you have, uh, you're going to access a website, teguru4u.com, then it will go over the TCP and three-way handshake will happen because you know the website, uh, we need a browser to open the websites and those are HTTP or HTTPS. And the communication media that is required for HTTP and HTTPS is TCP. So what will happen if you type techguru4u.com, your that packet is kept on hold because there are so many other processes that need to be happened. So what those processes are? When user type techguru4u.com in the browser, even the website is HTTP or HTTPS. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's only the security perspective. So first thing that will happen is a DNS query. So your DNS packet will go. Your application layer is kept on hold and the rest thing will work in a TCP. Okay, but your DNS is application layer protocol. That's the first packet that will go from the system after your application layer for the tech group for you.com is kept on hold. Okay. So we'll see that DNS query when it asks, what is techgroup4u.com? And it got the reply, okay, this is the IP address for techgroup4u.com. This is the example IP address, not the actual IP address. This is the DNS response you got. Now there, as I told you already, DNS works on application layer, okay? And it's a separate protocol. After DNS query, Handshake will start. Let's take an example. Suppose this is HTTP packet. Obviously, this is not because you can see here the lock button. This is HTTPS, but suppose this is HTTP packet. Then SYN request will go on this IP address and server will send the SYN act back to our IP address. And then acknowledgement will go to the server. And after that, connection is established, okay? And after that, your HTTP GET request will go and we will get the reply. This request was kept on hold because three-way handshake was not, not happened. Three-way handshake is required to create a session, two-way connection, okay? So now the connection is created. Server said that, okay, you can get the information from me. Uh, okay, then the HTTP request will go, GET request will go. If server will deny, then we will see uh, kind of reset packets that maybe I'll create another video for that. So these things are very much important for the troubleshooting that you are now aware that first three-way handshake will happen. Then only HTTP get request packets you will see in the Warshark. Now let's take an example of HTTPS. There is no difference between HTTP and HTTPS. It's just same protocol, but HTTPS is secure. Secure. Okay, so you can see the same three-way handshake is happening and connection is established. And if it is HTTPS, the first packet after three-way handshake will go is client hello. Then it will get the server hello. So three-way handshake is, uh, there are a lot of processes in the three-way handshake, uh, sorry, in the uh, SSL handshake. 
So if you want video on that, please do comment. I will create animated video on this assets and handshake also. And now let's move to the next thing. What goes inside the packet? Like when your SIM packet goes, what goes inside that? So you have source IP, destination IP. Source IP would be the IP address of this PC. Destination IP we got after our DNS query. Earlier we were only having the host name, techguru4u.com. So we have seen our previous slide that DS packet went and then I we got the destination IP. On that IP, our SYN packet will go. We should also have the source port that our this system will generate the source port and then the destination port okay obviously when it is going from the firewall there is a, another concept that is natting that gets happen but here uh, our topic is different we will not discuss about the natting here okay but we are aware that private ip cannot go outside it, it, sh it should be natted but our concern uh, concept is only to understand what is tv handshake what goes inside sin what goes inside sin app so, okay so now Let's see in detail about the sequence number. This is very important to understand the sequence number. But if you are doing a troubleshooting, uh, you would not require it. But if you are doing, if you you are in a Cisco TAC and there you are doing a troubleshooting, a deep level troubleshooting, then you have to see the packets. If there is any packet loss, you have to see what is the sequence number, which packet is lost. Okay. Uh, Three-way handshake and sequence number is very easy. First. SYN request will go and the sequence number, suppose it's 100. This is a random number I have taken and the acknowledgement number is always zero because we haven't received any acknowledgement yet. Okay, so we are waiting for the acknowledgement. Now the server will send this SYN ACK. So you can see server sent two things. It sends SYN, which we have also sent in the starting. It has also sent the acknowledgement for our SYN. So, if you see there is a plus one in the acknowledgement okay this was the sequence number 100 when we plus one the acknowledgement number becomes the 101 so server is acknowledging this sequence number but what is that plus one this is a ghost byte that gets added just to acknowledge the uh, client that your packet has been received and also you can see the sequence number of the server that's also the random number i have taken and this is 200 okay obviously when we will see your wireshark capture it will be different so it's a 200 and then you have seen here below the acknowledgement is sent i will just forward it acknowledgement is sent by the client again and in this acknowledgement you can see the sequence number here one byte that's also the ghost byte is added into that and the acknowledgement begins 201 okay the sequence number if you will see is the same which is the acknowledgement number okay so this is uh, how the calculation of sequence number and acknowledgement number happen in preview handshake but this sequence number and acknowledgement numbers Calculation is different when we go further after our three-way handshake, okay? There is a length that gets added. So uh, if you will comment, I can make video on that also, okay? So let's see the packets on the Wireshark. Okay, this is the final SYN will go. SYN act, acknowledgement, okay? So there was the last slide you might have seen also in the animation uh, two minutes video. Okay, I'll open the Wireshark. When you open a Wireshark, remind me later. When you open a Wireshark, you need to select any interface. So currently I'm connected with the Wi-Fi interface. So I will select this interface. Okay. Let's open you.com. I have taken this group image to make the animation. Okay, so my website has opened. Now we can just simply click here in the stop button, just stop it. Okay. 
and let's see here if you will type tcp all the tcp packet will come okay and we can see here sin then at what we need to do we need to right click and conversation you can select here tcp okay now if let me make it wider and if i click here this is sin if i will click here this packet will get changed so we need only to discuss about this tcp packet okay this is acknowledgement so let's discuss this sin so in the sin you can see here the source port destination port when we are talking about the layer 4 what goes in the layer 4 is port number not the ip ip address goes in the layer 3 so this is your layer 3 internet protocol so in this if i will show you here so this is the ip address ip version 6 you can see here the version is 6 okay so ip addresses will go in layer 3 and in your layer 4 there will be the port numbers you can see this is the source port random port as my website works in a 443 so this is the destination port okay length is zero and now we will see here sequence number so there are two sequence number one is a relative sequence number that is uh, by the wireshark to help you understand uh, because it's a zero it's not a complex number but this is the complex number that number is by the uh, packet itself okay that's the actual number but this is very uh, bad number to do the troubleshooting so i would i would say you you can prefer this number okay so how you can enable disable it if you will right click and uh, in the protocol reference here you will see relative sequence number okay if you will click here and you will see that your relative sequence number has gone so if you want it to come again you can just click on the relative sequence number and it will come again okay so let's see so here sequence number is a very long number we will remember only 920 okay and acknowledgement number is zero because we haven't received any acknowledgement and let's go here in the synac and now see Synac, as we have seen that server will send its own sequence number, random sequence number, that is this number, and the acknowledgement number is 921. Because our sequence number of client was 920. So one is added here and the acknowledgement number becomes 921. If you'll see here, 932 is the sequence number which is sent by the server. So what should be the acknowledgement number? Just add one here and that would be the acknowledgement number from the client so 932 plus one is a 933 let's click here in the client as uh, so a client acknowledgement so you see 933 right so that is how it's being calculated that's just a dummy byte i would say a ghost byte is get added every time just to acknowledge the other party that i have received your packet okay and after that you can see the client hello three that uh, ssi handshake started and uh, here you can see your application data starts going okay if i have to tell you more in this um free handshake in the sin synac packets there are more other values that goes which are obviously the flag sin flag will have the one it will turn on one uh, like it's turn on we say uh the sin flag if it is a synac then synac will also be turned on and it will be one okay because the, you know that it's only zero and one uh, on which our computer understands so it has turned it on also whatever value has to go like if it is sin it's act these all values will get turned on if we will go here in the acknowledgement only the act is turned on okay so these were the flags obviously you should understand these flags okay so another thing is if you go in the sin packet and we scroll it down a little bit there are options so these options are very important maybe i'll explain it later in any of my video in this you will see mtu size will go maximum segment size mss sorry this is 14405 and there is a window scaling there is a selective acknowledgement so these are really very important things to do the troubleshooting also sometimes there is a mss issue so we need to see what actual size is going what uh, these all things are required okay so i hope you understood freeway handshake now probably
Hey friends, so you have seen the three-way handshake detailed explanation. So I hope this video was really helpful to you. Please subscribe my channel and share with your friends. In today's video, we have seen how the calculation of the sequence number and acknowledgement number happens in a three-way handshake. And obviously there is a different calculation of sequence and acknowledgement number if you will go down to further packets. If you want me to make a video on that, please do comment. If you will comment more on one topic like SSL handshake or MTU, MTU issues, I will definitely make a video on that. So I request you to please share with your friends also. This will be very useful to them. Okay, bye.